bad for my standards. Like, Honestly, I would not let it grow out. This. If you ever got COVID again, you should just let it grow out. It's not going to do anything. It's going to stay like that? Yeah. Ruby, you seriously need to start thinking about a haircut. You're going to have to get a haircut at some point. You can't just keep letting your hair grow. There, I told my boy. All right. Live video. The eye of a needle. Okay, this guy stop, I'm filming. Oh, I'm so sorry. Okay, there, I think we did it. We're struggling today. We didn't realize how late it was, so bear with us. Oh my goodness, I can't even get this to stand up. Can you find me one more thing to lean this up against? Good morning, everybody. We have a great song here. Do you guys know this song, you kids? Um, my thanks to him. No. Sorry, we, we, I can't even find my tripods. My wife hid them from me. And I don't, I don't know the where speaker. they are, so. Huh? Use the speaker. This speaker? Yeah. No, it's kind of not ideal. <clears throat> okay, I'll use it. All right, come on over. Let's sing. Are we gonna use that speaker today? Yes. I think the pickers might be playing today. We're having a picnic today, so it's kind of, it's, it's crazy. I can't even find something to, all right, Sky, you're right here. You know my thanks to him? You do know it? No. I love to tell. Yeah. You know that. Oh, yeah. Sure. That's you. You hop up here beside of me. I'll get behind you. And we're going to sing. And I have a good Bible study today. It's very good. It's very good. River, I need your face a little better. Yeah, you do. Okay. Which one's Facebook and which one's Facebook? This one is YouTube. This is Facebook. Yeah. Okay. They again just woke up. Okay. I think we've got stuff leaned up to where we can do this. Everybody doing okay today? How's my Facebook crowd? See people on YouTube. Stick with us. Got a great Bible study. We're going to sing you a, one of my all-time favorite songs. Have we done this in a while? See, it seems to me like I just did this like a week ago. I don't think so. Okay, good. It doesn't matter because I'm going to do it anyway. I love this song. This is my Kenneth's all time favorite song, and it's quickly becoming mine. I've got to wait for Peter to hop on. All right. I'm seeing this tomorrow, too, because I saw the soundtrack in the living Really? Yeah. You saw a soundtrack for this? Mm hmm. No. It was on the couch. There is no soundtrack for this. This is an old apostolic song. What? I can't find a soundtrack for it. Matter of fact, that guy that's going to come into the studio and play piano, I'm going to have him do this one too. Here we go. This is called My Thanks to Him. Many of you will want to learn this. And I'll try to put the words on. Uh, there, I put them on like right there. So you can, you can snap a picture of the video and you can write them down. This is an incredible song. It makes me cry. You guys ready? Yep. <clears throat> I love to tell how Jesus saved my soul when I was lost and facing dark despair. But mortal tongue could Hey. 
shown when I am sad he brings me hope and cheer he gives me grace when sing that at church tomorrow a cappella. I don't care if there's no music. Maybe I'll get the old piano out tomorrow and play it. What do you think? Can oh, I have God. Her? God. She is a weirdo about folding her music. We can stand up on our Sunday and she just has to fold it like 50 times. <laughs> Gosh, we're not playing paper football already. Give it here. Get, get out. But that was a bad one. Thank you so much, kids. I love you. Guy, you have to go to Galaxy and pick up the steak. Oh. We're having a church picnic today here at the house. That's exciting. That's exciting. All right. Okay, here we go. I got a good Bible study. Please, stick with me. Uh, Bob and Carol Nestor sent me a message this week, and they always send me these nice little things that come off the Internet, and I like them. And this one was one about church being hard. It said church, church is hard, and it was all that. But then it talked about what the church is. It was a family and all that kind of thing. And at our church, we call ourselves the family of God. We sing it every Sunday. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. So it got me thinking about the different people that make up different churches. And what, what's the worst thing that usually happens in a church? What, what's, what's the thing that happens most? Clicks. These people think they're more important in the church than this, this and this, and this and this. So we're going to talk about a cool topic today. God is no respect of persons. Let's read in Acts 10. Please stick with me. This is a good Bible study. Simple verse to open. Acts 10 and 34. Then Peter opened his mouth 
and said, of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. If you see me looking back and forth, I'm not like crazy. I'm trying to do YouTube and Facebook at the same time. Somebody should develop an app where you're live streaming on both at once. See, I just gave somebody like a billion dollar idea. I'm stupid. Not like I have the brain to do that. Ain't gonna happen. All right, so anyway. If you hear noise out there, peanuts working on a car. Peter opened his mouth and said, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. So we read that and we say, that's nice. That's good. God's no respect of persons. This is, this is going to backfire on you here shortly. <laughs> I always have good news, bad news. Good cop, bad cop. Listen, in 35 it says, But in every nation, every nation, he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. Doesn't matter what color you are. Don't matter what nationality you are. Don't matter what socioeconomic status is. Don't matter where you come from. Don't matter who your parents were. The important part was that feareth him and worketh righteousness. Those are the important words, all right? So we read that first part and we say, well, that's wonderful. I'm just so happy about that. Not too many people would, would complain about equality in God, right? Until. <laughs> we'll get there in a minute. You say, well, that's nice. I'm going to back it up with a scripture in Romans. We're going to start in Romans 2 and read to verse 4. Uh, 2 and 4. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, to every... Let's see. Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance of longsuffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance, he says, but after hardness and impotent heart, uh, treasure up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and the revelation, who will render to every man, every man according to his deeds. Doesn't matter what color you are, no matter what country you're from, no matter nothing. Every man. To them who by patient continuance and well-doing seek for glory and honor, immortality, and eternal life, but unto them that are contentious and do not obey the truth, but un obey unrighteousness, indignation, and wrath, tribulation, and anguish upon every soul of man that doeth evil, of the Jew first and of the Gentile, every man. Okay? Bear with me. But glory and honor, peace to everyone that worketh good to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. For there is no respect to persons with God. I'm going to get somewhere. I really thought about this this week, and it really got me truly thinking. I'm going to, I'm going to hit you with something really cool here shortly. I know everybody says, oh, there's no respect to person. God loves everybody the same. But I'm going to, I'm going to face you with something that's really that I don't know that people, many people give too much thought about. I can't never find the books of the Bible. I read this thing, folks, night and day, and I can't ever remember how the books go in the Bible. Colossians 3 and 25. Here goes this. But he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he hath done, and there is no respect of persons. You thought this was just in the Bible once. I did. I thought it was just one time. It's in there over and over and over. All right, I'm going to continue reading. Well, I want to read 18 through 25 because it says, Wives, submit yourself unto your husbands. As it is fit for the Lord. Okay, I'm going to read after the comma. Husbands, love your wives and be not bitter against them. That'd be easier if they wasn't so hateful. Oh, boy. Hmm. I'm going to get in trouble for that. Watch, there's a comment coming from my wife. Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is pleasing to the Lord. Fathers, provoke your children not to anger, lest they be discouraged. Servants, in all things, obey your master. I see, I knew it. She says, said, hey. According to the flesh, not with eye service as men pleasers, but in singleness of heart, Fearing God. This is what you got to think of it, you men pleasers. 
men don't matter. Knowing that you shall receive the word of your inheritance for you serve the Lord Jesus Christ. All right, moving on. We're getting somewhere. Just hold, bear with me. I'm going to get somewhere really good. Because now the rubber is going to start meeting the road when we go to the wonderful book that we're studying in Bible study at our church that I know nothing about. But we're going to go there again this morning. Revelation 20 and 15, 12 through 15. I'm not going to speak real long this morning because I've got to get ready for this. i got a bunch of people coming here shortly. That, well, I reconnected, I think. All right, so anyway, that's my theory. It's all going to crash. Well, I know it is because we read in Revelation the other night that all this crap's going to hit the fan. We, we read some fearsome things. <laughs> okay. So, what's he saying here, 12 through 15? I saw the dead, small and great, everybody together. This is where I'm getting to right now, here just in a few minutes. I'm going to we'll bring this thing up. And the books were opened, and another book were opened, which was the Lamb's Book of Life. And the dead were judged out of those things were rich in, which were written in the books according to their works. Listen. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Here's where I want to go. Did it say the great were entered into heaven and the small? Remember the beginning of this? It says the small and the great stood before God. So were the small cast into hell or maybe the reverse? Were the great thrown into hell because the first shall be last and the last shall be first and the small went to heaven. That's more likely how it's going to be and that's why I titled this thing the Eye of a Needle. Right? Thinking yourself great in this life what the Bible promises over and over thinking yourself great in this life is not good. <laughs> it's, it's just a recipe for disaster. All right, so where do I want to go? I should just, I should just talk at this point because I've got a couple more scriptures, but this, this is kind of where. Oh, here, no, here's a scripture about what I was just talking about. The great shall be small, and the small shall be great. Uh, Luke and John, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. Listen to Luke sixteen and fifteen. Oh, this is good. This is good stuff. Luke sixteen fifteen says, and he said unto them. Ye are they which justify yourselves before men. Oh, man, this might be the best one. But God knoweth your hearts. For that which is highly esteemed among men is abomination in the sight of God. You know, when somebody does a heart transplant, you don't know where that thing came from. Could have been a mass murder. Could have been the richest man in the world. Could have been, who knows where it comes from. It doesn't matter. Because the heart is the same, see? This is different, but the heart is the same. So this is what God looks on, not the physical heart, but the heart of man, okay? So what I want to say, just like in Revelation that we just read, small and great will stand there. Everyone screams about equality and they want to be just treated like everybody else and treated fairly. You will never find equality greater to be more in in like in perfection equality will never be more in perfection than it will be at the judgment seat of Christ because you won't no longer be a doctor so and so you won't have three college degrees you won't be a lawyer you won't be a farmer you won't be anything but a stark naked soul in front of God to answer for what you have done. And listen, the Bible tells us that he won't come until every man has had opportunity. So your opportunity has presented itself. Today might be your day of salvation. So whoever you are listening to me, and this is why I named this 
the eye of a needle because the Bible tells us that it's easier for a rich man to go through the eye of a needle, which was actually a gate in the city. It wasn't like the, the needle. The eye of a needle than it was for a rich man to enter heaven. Why? Not because God has something to do with it. It's because the rich man begins to, one, not see his need of God, think he's above it all. How many... I'm not going to go specifically to churches because I'll just get in trouble. But I'm, I'm tell, I'll just say it this way. In the churches that I have attended, there's far more people down here at this point of the socioeconomic status than there are up here. Now, they can be bad, too, because they're just coming after God for needs. <laughs> so I'm not saying all of the poor people or the people in the lower socioeconomic status are perfect. But you don't, you don't, every church I've been to, I didn't go to church with a bunch of highfalutin rich people. I'm not saying they're not out there. But my point is, it's harder for the, for the people who don't have need of God, who, who don't have, they, they're not needing their bills paid. They're not, they, they don't have any health problems. They don't have all this kind of stuff. Man, if I ever need to be poor to make heaven, to make me poor. Whatever it takes, right? But when you stand at the judgment seat of Christ, you're not going to have the, all the, well, the DR before your name, Dr. So-and-so, and you're not going to have all these degrees after it, JD, DDS, MS. You're not a dentist anymore. You're a stark, naked soul in front of God. People need to hear this. I think people literally think that they can carry all of their, the things they are in this life, they're, they're like, well, Lord, you know, I'm a little different because I have, I, have, I have money. I'm a little on a higher socioeconomic status than most people. You think you're going to get favors when you stand in front of God? No, in fact, you should be better because you don't have a lot of needs. You should be so helpful to other people and doing what's right by God. You're the, you're the good Samaritan that's supposed to be helping people if God has blessed you. So here you are. You're going to have a harder time than people that don't have a plug nickel. I will talk about money for a little bit. I don't like to talk about it. But your earthly status, I wrote this down. I wrote it this way, and this is probably a good way to put it. Your earthly status can give you a false confidence with God. Don't do it. Don't assume because you have riches in this life and you're, you're this and you're that and you have titles and you're on this committee and you're on that committee that, that suddenly you have favor with God when you stand in front of him. You know what brings favor with God? Righteousness. Holiness. Relationship with God. So whatever you are today, don't think about it when you think about your relation with God. I don't sit in my chair every morning and say, Lord, here I am, I'm your, here I am, I'm your, uh, your attorney. I hate telling people I'm an attorney. I'm just a real estate guy. Here I am, Lord, I'm your real estate attorney. Send blessings down on me because I deserve it. I've got a degree. Are you kidding me? I sit in there brokenhearted every morning crying out to the Lord to have mercy on me, a sinner. I can't let my me get all highfalutin thinking I have some kind of favor with God because of, of where I stand in the world. I'm telling you, God's really dealing with me about this. I may teach this at church sometime because people, Acts 12, let me just read you a story. I'll just tell you the story and then I'll close. Herod started mouthing in front of everybody about, and, and he, he was being disrespectful to God and an angel touched him and the worms ate him right where he sat. This is a king. God has the ability to say, I'll put you in your place. I don't want to wait till I'm standing there in that book of Revelation and God puts me in my place. I want to be in my place today. Lord, I feel, I don't even want to say nothing else. I feel this in my bones today. Keep me humble. This is why the Bible says, your, your word says, if my people 
who are called by my name will humble themselves. That's what the word says. Humble themselves. Not come to you with all their accolades and everything they've done in this life and try to impress you with all of their resume. That is not what you're about. And I'm thankful, Lord. I'm thankful that you look on every man with equality. Thank you for that. It's all we've got. You don't care who my father and mother was. It doesn't matter as far as my relationship with you. We have that. The world keeps screaming for equality. Where are they going to find it greater than in you, Lord? Where? And yet they reject you and say that you don't have that. You have the greatest equality that ever was and ever will be. We're all going to stand before you. And we're not going to have any college degrees behind our name. We're not going to have any titles in front of our name. We're not going to have any a resume to show you of all the, the things we've done in, in the world. We're only going to have a resume of things we've done for Christ. Uh, and in our relationship with you, that's what we'll be judged by. God, keep me humble before you. Keep me humble before you. Don't let me be anything greater than what I am in my head. I want to be humble before you. And when I stand before you, I want to I want to be right. In Jesus' name, amen. I felt that. I felt that. Don't 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 get all confident in your in your worldly standing. All right? And don't be discouraged if your worldly standing is not good. You and the president of the United States or the president of any country are going to stand side by side in front of the judgment seat and you're not going to be any different. Aren't you thankful for that today? I'm grateful for it. If you hear that zapping, that's my bug zapper. In West Virginia, this is our entertainment. A Coke, a bug zapper, a little bit of music. That's all we need. Love you all. We'll see you next week. That was... I just feel that. Have a good day.